YouTube family. What's the deal? It's your boy Chris Big Clean Cliff for Cliff World TV. And y'all already know how I'm rocking, family. Y'all know this. And today, man, we finna take an interesting deep dive into the life. And I'm talking real interesting now. Disclaimer, YouTube family. This guy that I'm doing the story on today happens to be one of my favorite artists in the world, man. One of my favorite artists in the world. So I'm going to need y'all to show some respect today. We finna take a trip down to New Orleans again, yeah. Mm-hmm. But we finna take an interesting deep dive into the life, <laughs> the journey, the trials, and the tribulations of New Orleans' own currency, the hot spill, man. Yeah. I've been going over this in my head for months. Like, man, I can't wait till I get good enough to do this currency video. I'm going to do a currency video, man. So y'all already know what y'all can do, YouTube family. Sit back. Get your doobie. Ooh, we sound even better saying it. We talking about currency. Get your doobie. Sit back. Get your doobie. Kick back like we finna watch a movie, man. It's your boy, Chris B. Clean Cliff, dog, of Cliff World TV. We finna get straight into it. Shante Scott Franklin, or shall we call him by the name that we all know him by, Currency the Hot Spiller, aka Spiller, was born in the beautiful month of April in 1981 in the culturally rich city of New Orleans, Louisiana. Now, at a very young age, while being from a city that has so many different musical genres and influences, young Shante would submerge himself into the art of creating music from scratch. Now, when he was coming up, his brother, Mr. Marcello, had a small record label slash rap group named Tough Guy Entertainment. I ain't gonna say I'm no gangster, but I'm from the street. You know what I'm saying? And I ain't trying to portray nothing on no kids to have them to go through what I went through. You know what I'm saying? That's why I always call myself Mr. Marcello from the ghetto. Mm -hmm. Ghetto means gathering higher education to teach others. So, you know, I'm just trying to teach a lot of my other young people, you know what I'm saying? Just to grow. It ain't just me. Nah. Later, Currency would sit down with an interview with Two Cent Magazine. Currency would explain to them that they did a partnership with No Limit Records because Marcelo and P were both from Uptown Projects in New Orleans, which ultimately would create a trust factor between the two. Marcelo will go on to release a project under the No Limit moniker, all the while setting up for his own label, Tough Guy Entertainment. Now, this will be around the same time the young Shante, aka Currency, will ultimately decide that he was actually going to rap. Yeah, from that moment, he knew that this wasn't just a hobby. He wanted to do this for a career and make a living. And in his own words, Quote, unquote, he said, I'm going to start doing this rap shit now. Spitter had a friend from around the way named Dodo that got tragically murdered in August of 2001. And soon after that, Calliope born rapper and little brother to Master P, Corey Miller would reach out to the young Currency. And he'd even offer him a spot on the roster for his new record label that he was starting up for himself. True records. I got a job at like Toys R Us. C Murder came to Toys R Us to buy a John Madden. And he was like, This is where your little ass is at now. I was like, Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm, I'm killing it. I had two Jeffrey pins on my collar because I was like so polished. Like, they put me on the register. I wasn't even there for that. Like, I was like working the blue and orange mm -hmm. zone where Hot Wheels and shit was. And they was like, Nah, fast track this kid. So I'm at the register. Fucking see murder by his man. He's like, no way. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> I'm killing He's like, this come shit. to my house. Come to my house tomorrow. I was like, I have work tomorrow. <laughs> like, like, not only do I have school, bro, but I definitely am reporting here tomorrow, dog. Like, you see murder, my nigga, but it's towards our right. <laughs> like, won't you let me? If you fuck with me, won't you hold that shit till Saturday? He had this reaction. And he had offered Spitter to come over and put some work in. So Spitter did just that. He got a major cosign from Corey Miller that didn't seem like a major thing from the position that he was in. But from the outside looking in, man, he had been chosen by a legend to join his label. 
Currency wasted no time getting inside of that booth. Now, but shortly after linking up with Corey Miller, Corey Miller would be arrested and later convicted by a 10-2 jury for the homicide that occurred in 2003, in which case he was accused of gunning down a 16-year-old named Steve Thomas at the former Platinum Club in Harvey. Well, unfortunately and fortunately for Spitter, he'd lose his position at True Records, but Master P would step up and extend an olive branch to the young Louisiana rap. He had offered currency to Hot Spitter a spot on the new No Limit and to join the 504 boys. So ultimately, he had sent for currency and without any apprehensions, Currency would proceed to join the new No Limit. To the high spinner standing in front of the new sign, the new No Limit Records, which I'm glad to be a part of. You know, I'm doing it out here thugging. 504 boys, we just wrapped the album up. Like, to thank y'all for buying it. Y'all put a few more dollars in my pocket. Like, I wasn't straight already. You know what I'm saying? It's cool, though. That's how we doing it this year, 2003. He'll become a new member of the 504 boys. Yeah, hey, that boy Currency had joined the 504 boys, and at the time, it was Mr. Magic. That boy Silk the Shocker. And Chopper, Chopper style, Chop, Chop, Chopper style, Chopper style, crazy. And that boy T Bow the Firecracker. Man, I ain't gonna lie, the 504 boys was on fire early 2000s. You're lying to yourself if you tell yourself this. But, anyways, moving right along. Currency would fall right into the place with the No Limit lineup. But he had noticed pretty early on that the direction that Currency wanted to go versus the direction that the label were going were two complete polar opposites. Currency would appear on the sophomore album of the 504 Boys entitled Ballers. He'd even make a noteworthy appearance on Master P's 2004 album Good Side vs. Bad Side, a double disc banger. And on this double disc tape, Currency would be featured on two songs with Corey Miller, aka C Murder, whom we will refrain from calling him that in this video due to his ongoing legal troubles. Well, later in that same year of 2004, Currency would release his own solo mixtape, Sports Center Volume 1. Well, Currency, one day, he'd be playing basketball with the label owner's son, Lil Romeo. And Currency, being a jokester that he is, while Romeo was at the free throw line, Currency were blurred out in a jokerly manner that he was going to leave no limit for cash money. I told like a joke. I'm like, like Romeo, I'm like, yo, playing basketball with little Romeo, I'm like, tomorrow, like, I'm out, like I'm so I'm over starting going to cash money. And I wasn't, I was like about to start my own thing. And I just wanted him to miss his free throw. <laughs> All right. But I said it, mm -hmm. and it started a fire amongst the, the camp. People who heard. And one of the homies called me and was like, bro, I don't know if you were joking or not, but like, you better hope you could go. Like, I already knew I needed to start my mm -hmm. own shit, but I had no plans on going to cash money. I had fucking printed up t-shirts, start my own thing. Went to Chevron, fucking Lil Wayne's sitting in his car, and he was like, what the, what that did on the back of your shirt? I was like, that's my fucking logo. Like, I'm starting my own shit. No, man, don't start your own shit, bro. Come to Miami tomorrow. Like, fucking, let's just do Young Money. Like, I'm starting it all over again. I'm like, fuck, all right, bet. Currency would now be subject of some slight scrutiny. But in all honesty, man, uh, he really meant no harm by the comment. But he did start to feel as though he wasn't being as genuine as he should be to himself while rapping over what he would call Army Beach and portraying himself of an image as a gangster. And we all know by now that Currency Steez is not that at all. In fact, man, everyone knew Currency the hot spitter for being a laid back stylish dude that liked old cars. Now, Currency ultimately just wanted to get himself in a better position and you can't blame him for that. And not only that, he was also growing a bit frustrated with the label having the schedule that it did and him not being prioritized and pushed to the front. Him and Master P would actually have riffs over these situations. Master P would say Currency was being a little too impatient and he was in a rush. All the while, Currency already had a vision for where he wanted to go with it. So 
I mean, the two just clashed a little bit. Nevertheless, he did grow slightly bothered by the label not pressing his projects out faster. To be real, you two family, he wasn't even actually thinking about joining Cash Money, but he also didn't want to play the backfield of the record label that had seen his best days and was on a ticking time bomb before his demise. And with that, Currency will ultimately decide to go his separate ways and try the independent circle. I'm getting Man. a shot. Currency, the high spitter, bro. Look at him. Look at him out here. Look at me. Just trying, the high spitter. trying to get somewhere. I need to get some of these shots, man. He's trying to take a bite out of crime. Everybody That's what he's trying to do. For, everybody look for me. I need to get in these shots. I'm just saying. He got the whole rimmed up Camaro over there. One sitting there by himself. He got enough seats. <laughs> Put somebody else in there. I'm this big. I'm not going to hold up that much people. I ain't gonna look in the camera. Nothing I'm gonna do like this. So much. Nigga, come on, let's go. Why you gotta race tonight? You don't wanna get wild tonight. What's up with your mind? You linked up with Cash Money, bro. That's how I do the Wayne, bro. When I uh, when I got out to deal with Pete, I said his name. Man, <laughs> when I got out to deal with Homie, uh, the check wasn't coming in, bro. We was on a, a different schedule, bro. I don't have no problem with him. You no, know, if. You know, when you watch this home, I don't have a problem in the world with it. I was just, our schedule was wrong. I was trying to come out, because I'm a rapper. So I was trying to rap right now for me. And, uh, you know, schedule was conflicting, so I had to check out. I got, you know, I still keep in contact with C. Murder. That's all I was really worrying about with my big homie. So C said he wasn't tripping, so I just had to get it. You know what I'm talking about? That's Mike and Lil Mike right there. Wayne was now stepping aside from his role of being the artist just for a little while to do his recruiting for a project that he had been working on. Young Money Entertainment, yeah. Wayne was becoming the CEO of his own label and little old Spitter was just a guy that he needed to start his roster off right. Although Currency was joking about joining Cash Money when he was playing basketball with Lil Romeo, that's the thing. Young Money was not cash money, man. And Currency was really in no position to turn down such offers. I mean, let's be real. Wayne and Cash Money was the hottest artist on the planet at the time. So, unreluctantly, Currency would take Lil Wayne up on that offer. And he would join Young Money. And as a matter of fact, YouTube family, Currency the Hot Spitter is the first hand-picked artist that Wayne chose himself to be a part of Cash Money. Before Nicki, before Drake, before Lil Twist, before Chucky, before Tiger, Currency the Hot Spitter was the first artist. Bro, ain't that crazy? Immediately, Currency the Hot Spitter was on Young Money's first mixtape. And after that, Currency the Hot Spitter would be summoned to put a verse down on Bloody Birdman's album, Fast Money, a 2005 release by Birdman, in which case Currency would pin lyrics down on the track Shoveling snow. Now, in that same year, 2005, a monumental year for everybody who's my age, because this is when the Carter 2 came out. In that same year, 2005, on Lil Wayne's Carter 2, currency would be heard on Wayne's song, Grown Man. Y'all remember that song, Girl? You are so fine. I wish that I can get you home to command. Currency was on the Carter 2, bro. Tell me that's not major. And not only that, in the very next year, 2006, Currency the High Spitter would make multiple appearances on what some would say is one of Wayne's greatest mixtapes to date. That'd be the Dedication 2 hosted by DJ Drama. This was a Gangster Grills mixtape. 2006, man, y'all really had to be there. Currency the High Spitter was creeping and crawling through the back streets of the industry, but he was getting major placements on mixtapes like this. He was really just destined to be who he is today. Like, excuse my language, you too fatty, but no bullshit. Dedication 2 has to be one of Wayne's best mixtapes to date. I don't care what nobody say. And for Currency to have multiple placements on that, should have let us know at that time that this, this dude was going to be a force to be reckoned with. Now, this would be also around the same time that you would see Lil Wayne wearing a whole lot of skateboarding clothes and a whole lot of bathing apes, a whole lot of ice cream, and a whole lot of BBCs, bro. Currency was Lil Wayne's 
unofficial stylist. Now, a lot of people don't like to talk about this, but a lot of y'all favorite rappers got they style from currency. A lot of y'all favorite rappers still dress like 2008, 2009, spit it to this day. Like, currency been serving looks for the hip hop industry just as long as Pharrell Williams, just as long as uh, Lupe Fiasco, just as long as Kanye West. I bullshit y'all not when I say Currency the Hot Spitter is probably who your favorite rapper got his style from. I'm not even lying, I'm just being real. Now, during his tenure with Young Money, Currency released mixtapes and made guest appearances on track by fellow label mates. However, his time with the label was relatively short-lived and Currency and Young Money parted ways amicably in 2007. Following his departure from Young Money, Currency went on to establish himself as an independent artist, ultimately founding his own record label, Jet Life Recordings. Currency's departure from Young Money Entertainment in 2007 attributed to creative differences and a desire for more artistic control over his recordings. At the time, Currency expressed the need for greater independence and autonomy in his musical pursuits, prompting him to seek opportunities that would allow him to chart his own path and shape his own sound according to his vision. While Currency's time with Young Money provided him with exposure and connections within the industry, he ultimately felt like his artistic aspirations and creative direction would be better served by pursuing an independent route. This decision led to his establishment of his own label, Jet Life Recordings, through which he could release music on his own, on his own terms, and connect more directly with his fan base. By parting ways with Young Money, Currency was able to carve out a niche for himself as an independent artist, cultivating a distinctive musical style and building a dedicated following that appreciated his authenticity and innovation. This move would allow him to fully explore his artistic potential and solidify his position in the hip-hop landscape on his own terms. It would allow him to be greater with his creative freedom and control over his music. But he wouldn't leave Young Money without having some funny memories. In fact, YouTube family, there was a time where Currency found himself a bit part to while on tour with Young Money. And he ultimately decided to go on board the tour bus in search of a beverage to quench his thirst. Well, upon opening the fridge, Currency would spot a pack of 20-ounce Hawaiian punches that all seemed to be new. Well, the New Orleans native would crack one open, and he would proceed to chug the drink only for Little Wayne to enter the room after Currency had sipped the last drop. Wayne would say to Spitter, Spitter, bitch, don't tell me you drunk that whole... I'm going to let Currency tell the story. Check it out. Check, yeah, okay. yeah. This is in the, the height of it. It's going okay. down. You All know right, what I'm listen, saying? I like, I like his energy. Let's I'm keep it high. Let's keep it high, currency. I'm on the Go bus. Ahead. You know what I'm saying? Uh, we was playing like pickup basketball outside. Mm. Fucking run on the bus to get something mm. to drink. Now I'm straight yeah, on I'm that. <laughs> this one, the, uh, the Hawaiian punch. They came uh. out with different colors, blue and purple, and all this shit. So they had mm. the purple one in there. Purple amazing mix. All right. Wow. Fucking the okay. six they pack of bitch. This, shit. Sounds... this nigga uh. took. He pulled up the whole six thing and then put them back in the rings. Mm. So they looked like harmless purple Hawaiian punches in the fridge. Mm. So I ran in basketball thirsty yeah. and fucking down one of them bitches, like standing in the hallway of the bus, just killing it. Yeah. And he came on the bus and was like, oh, Lord. Because he know I don't fuck with you. Like, right. spill him. You probably about to die. Oh, sure. <laughs> <laughs> he was like, you probably about to die, yeah, nigga, because yeah. I had drunk the whole thing. And he was like, yeah. you didn't you didn't feel like the difference in the bottle. He turned another right. one upside down to show me. You know, so right. it was all stuck to the bottom of the shit. So I was like, oh, you know. Right. So we was watching Hostel. Uh -huh. We hadn't even left New Orleans yet. We was on right. our way to Miami. Mm. Watching Hostel in the parking lot of the the Hostel, mom. that's the, uh, the the movie that was yeah. they, they take fucking the over. They yeah. was yeah. killing you. They uh -huh. cut your eyes yeah. out oh, and yeah. shit. Yeah, and I, I fell things. asleep. And well, I thought I, I thought I was up. Did you wake so up with your it, eyebrows? Check off. it out. Check it out. Yeah, I thought I was watching the movie, and then Mac <laughs> Mac was like, "Bro, go mm -hmm. lay it down, man. You look ridiculous." I was right. like, "All right." So I, I went to the rack, uh -huh. and I woke up in Miami on the bus by myself. 
Mm. Um, like where and you know you can't park buses by the hotel, so I was like sitting yeah. in some open parking lot somewhere like off the beach, right. and nobody even knew I was like they just left me on the bus. Like it was like yo, we we really were scared. Like wow. we left you because we we kind of thought that you, lane. you might have been done. Did they leave yeah. the TV on? At yeah, least? fucking. <laughs> so since then, and you, you now I'm function? straight. Yeah, because I don't I don't even remember nothing about. But you don't drink green and lean. You can't sleep 18 now. Like you're not supposed to do that. Mm. Like I slept from New Orleans no, to Miami. To death. To Miami in in the bus. Yeah, man. That boy Spitter had just accidentally ingested a four ounce of that activist. Y'all know it was that activist back then, man. So like I say, it wasn't like his time with Young Money was just a dry, uneventful time. He actually learned a lot with those guys and he had a lot of fun with them. But Z family, Spitter had been picking up game the whole way through. And I mean, he had been around some of the biggest moguls and the biggest rappers to ever do it. And he soaked up the game like a sponge on the sea floor. Now, while currency stint with Young Money was relatively brief, it played a significant role in shaping his career trajectory and laying the groundwork for his subsequent success as a solo artist. His time with Young Money provided valuable experience and exposure within the music industry, helping to solidify his reputation as a talented rapper and paving the way for his future endeavors in the hip-hop scene. In 2009, Spitter would drop a studio classic titled, This Is Not A Mixtape. And ironically enough, 2009 would also be the same year that the boy got a major look while being handpicked out for the 2009 XXL freshman cover. And he'd be accompanied by some hard hitters like Kid Cudi, Ashton Roth, Corey Guns, Ace Hood, Wale, Wiz Khalifa, and Charles Hamilton, a solid lineup if you ask me, give or take a few artists. At this time, Currency would also be listed as an artist on skateboard legend Terry Kennedy's Fly Society Collective. Now, Fly Society was initially a clothing line slash lifestyle brand that was co-founded by Currency and skateboarder Terry Kennedy in the mid-2000s. The brand represented the blend of hip-hop and skate culture, reflecting both Currency's passion for fashion, music, and streetwear, as well as Kennedy's background in skateboarding. Currency and Terry Kennedy aimed to create a brand that would resonate with fans of both music and skateboarding, embodying a laid-back and stylish aesthetic. Fly Society released a range of merchandise, including clothing, accessories, skate decks often featuring bold graphics and designs that reflected the brand's fusion between hip-hop and skate influences although fly society achieved a degree of popularity garnered attention within the street wearing urban fashion circles the brand's prominence has somewhat waned away in the recent years man especially with terry kennedy being locked up right now for homicide now Currency's focus has primarily shifted back to his musical career, while Terry Kennedy at the time had continued to pursue skateboarding and other ventures. Now, while Fly Society may not be prominently featured in Currency's current activities, the brand remains a significant part of his creative legacy, showcasing his entrepreneurship spirit and ability to transcend music into areas of art and lifestyle culture. Currency and Terry Kennedy had a close working partnership and friendship with each other through their collaborations on the Fly Society brand. Terry Kennedy, as I stated before, is a professional skateboarder and Currency was a rapper. And at the time, I don't know how many of y'all out there are fans of skateboarding or anything, but y'all know uh, when skaters would do they demos, which would be like little skits of them skating and hitting tricks and going off ledges and going down poles. They would often have hip hop songs playing in the background and always the skate world and hip hop had always merged into each other. Uh, as a matter of fact, a lot of the skate brands that people wear today, they're not even aware that they're skate brands like Thrasher or Independent or even Supreme. So yeah, man, hip hop and skateboarding has always been neck to neck, man. Currency, although he rocked with Fly Society, he didn't really want to make the same mistake as he did previously by being a part of a group like he was with the 504 Boys and later Young Money. Instead, 
he'd remain pretty adamant that he was in no way, shape, or form trying to be a part of the quote-unquote rap group. And although he was pretty vocal about this with his partner TK, Currency would run into a small rift with other artists associated with the Fly Society brand. Allegedly, artists had came to Spitter for a verse, only for Currency to turn them down. And hey man, you can't blame them because after looking into it, some of these guys that was on that roster, I'd never even heard of them besides TK. Everybody in that camp, man, was basically a nobody. So, hey, I get it. I get it, man. So, yeah, some of the guys were started to feel it in uh, some type of way about Currency not actually wanting to work with him. But like I stated before, he kind of made it pretty clear that he didn't want to be in a group, man. But anyways, this would spark a small disagreement. And not to mention at the time, TK was actively engaging in the skate slash rap beef for Lupe Fiasco, so it has started to get a little bit of silly. Y'all, I felt like he was trying to get off our plate. So I said, fuck it, I'm gonna start rapping. I said, kick, push, pass, kick, push, pass. Talking about the skate perpetrating my ass. That's what you don't wanna see the ice cream in all black. See you at your funeral, laying on your back. I heard he had something out that I, I never heard the song, but I heard somebody he's talking, he's gonna kill Lupe and then something up. I was just gonna say the skateboarders ain't with that. We 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 we, we just wanna come out and shred the spot up. We ain't trying to kill nobody, ain't no Nevertheless, TK would address these rumors on an interview with Vlad TV. You and Currency for going back to forth recently. Yeah, and I, I'm glad people have been bringing this up a lot lately too, because I really don't got nothing against Curse. I really don't. Like I said, I told I had an interview yesterday and they asked me the same scenario. You know, what what happened with that? I said at the end of the day, Currency always came to us straightforward and told us, like, dude, I, I don't want to be in a group with no one. I want to do my own thing, which I respect because he's been, you know, chasing his dream and trying to do his thing for the longest. He just never had the chance to really pop on the level that he wanted to. So at the end of the day, I could feel where he's coming from. Like, I just don't want to continue to get around people and always have to be in a group or never being able to do me as a person, and which I respect. So long story short, yeah, we, we were always just the design sense. And he always told us, you know, we do music, but I ain't trying to be in a group. But I'm, I got love for y'all. I'm cool with you, T. And anytime you want to do music, I'm down for it, you know. And the trouble started in the sense of I knew that. But my friends didn't know that. So my friends reached out to try to do some music. And they was just like, man, I really don't mess with y'all like that. Mm -hmm. And that's where all that came about. I never said that. And like I said, he's... They took it offensive, which I know they would have took it personal because they thought, you know, we were all on the same level, which they didn't know that. So when he, like I said, they reached out to do some music with him. He, you know, responded in a, in a, in a messed up manner. Like, you know, like, I ain't, you know, I'm cool on y'all, whatever. I don't pull him again. They took it upon themselves. And like, I just got the short end. I got the bad, the, the short end of the stick because I was in the situation. You know, and I told them, I'm like, just let it be. You know, like, you can't get mad. Now. I think it's important to mention that Currency also had trademarked the Skydiver and Young Roddy rocking with him during the years of the Fly Society days, and they'll actually join him on his next business venture. And this is where the hip-hop mogul and one half of Rockefeller Records founder, Dame Dash, will step into the scene. And it is all around the same time, YouTube family, that I myself became a huge fan of Currency. Yeah, I can vividly remember sitting in my mom's crib trying to figure out what I was going to do with my life while watching MTV Jams when the video for Breakfast came on. And from that moment forward, I was hooked. Now, Currency had linked with Dame Dash and his creative control music brand all the while. Currency was one of the first to utilize social media outlets like Twitter in order to stay connected with other artists across the United States that was having a buzz at the time. Now, fans of the up-and-coming Pittsburgh artist Wiz Khalifa and his Taylor Gang were always requesting that the two collaborate on projects, and Wiz had even sent Currency something for him to jump on, but Currency being Currency would smoke one and forget about it and accidentally never respond. After which, some slight pressure will be applied by Wiz Khalifa's fans and Wiz will actually go public with the claims that Currency stiffed him by not replying. Currency will make it a priority to make that feature happen after getting a little bit of scrutiny on Twitter now. Ever since the two first met, They've always been like brothers, even living together at one point. 
Currency and Wiz Khalifa's history of collaboration extends beyond just the joint mixtapes How Fly. Their friendship and musical partnership have deep roots that have facilitated numerous successful projects and endeavors over the years. Their connection dates back to the mid-2000s when both artists were emerging figures on the hip-hop scene. They bonded and shared love for music, a similar work ethic, and a commitment to bring and hone their craft. This shared passion for creating authentic and quality music laid the groundwork for their lasting friendship. The How Fly mixtape released in 2009, it was a significant milestone in their collaborative journey. The project showcased their chemistry, lyrical proudness, and ability to create cohesive bodies of work together. How Fly was received well by fans and critics alike, further solidifying their status as a potent duo in hip-hop. Following the success of How Fly, Currency and Wiz Khalifa continued to collaborate on various tracks, mixtapes, and projects. Their musical synergy and complementary styles have resonated with audiences, leading to a dedicated following for their joint work. And y'all know, y'all know Wiz and Currency go crazy together. That's kind of where I even get to uh, get to snack, get to doobie from. But anyways, their enduring friendship and collaborative efforts have not only produced memorable music, but it has also inspired fans and fellow artists into showcasing the power of genuine artistic connection and mutual respect in the competitive world of hip hop. But it must be stated that although the two were alike in their musical tastes and overall aesthetic at the time, Currency and Wiz Khalifa were different in the area of one wanting to remain independent for as long as possible, and the other rising to stardom at a pace that could only be contained by a major machine. Nevertheless, the two would drop cult classics like Live in Concert in 2013, following the success of How Fly. Wiz Khalifa and Currency teamed up again for Live in Concert EP, the project consists of six tracks that highlights their melodic flows and cohesive rap styles. The EP was praised for its nostalgic vibes and lyrical content. And their third one was 2009, and this came out in 2019. It was a full-length studio album. 2009 marked a return to form for Wiz Khalifa and Currency, referencing the year of their first collaboration. The album features production from notable producers and showcases the duo's growth as artists while maintaining their signature sound that fans have come to love. In addition to their official collaborative projects, Wiz Khalifa and Currency have often appeared on each other's solo albums, mixtapes, and singles, further solidifying their musical bond. Their joint efforts have consistently delivered a laid-back, lyrically driven hip hop that resonates with their fan base and showcases their shared passion for the craft. But then there was still the deal that he had with Dame Dash. So let's speak on that a little bit. Currency's relationship with Dame Dash delves into a period of significant artistic exploration and entrepreneurship for both individuals. The partnership between the two began around 2010 with Currency signing to Dame Dash's record label Implant, Blue Rock Records, under the broader umbrella of Dame Dash's media collective, DD-172. Dame Dash's DD-172 project was a multifaceted endeavor that sought to create an artistic haven where musicians, visual artists, filmmakers, and other creatives could collaborate and thrive outside of the confines of a major record label. Currency's involvement in this initiative marked the departure from the traditional music industry model as it emphasized artistic freedom and creative anonymy. During Currency's time at DD-172, he released a series of critically acclaimed mixtapes and albums to showcase his lyrical proudness, distinctive style, and entrepreneurial spirit. Collaborating with artists across different disciplines within the DD-172 community allowed Currency to experiment with his sound and broaden his creative horizons. Now, y'all already know Currency is from New Orleans, Louisiana, and y'all have always heard the jazz bass lines in his music, so I can't say that DD-172 actually 
I helped him with that. He's always kind of basically had the same sound since he left Cash Money. However, the partnership between Currency and Dame Dash was not without its challenges. And in 2011, Currency filed a lawsuit against Dame Dash, alleging unauthorized releases of his music and merchandise. This legal dispute underscored the complexities of their working relationship and ultimately led to a public falling out between the two. Now, despite the legal issues and eventual dissolution of their formal partnership, Currency's time at DD-172 under Dame Dash's guidance marked a significant period of growth and artistic exploration for the rapper. The experience of collaborating with Dame Dash and participating in the initiative ecosystem of the DD-172, while their relationship may have not ever evolved over time, the connection between Currency and Dame Dash during that era remains a pivotal chapter in Currency's career, demonstrating his willingness to push boundaries, experiment with new creative avenues, and assert his independence within the music landscape. Here's an insert from Double XL where Currency speaks on the situation with Dame Dash, but real, real, real briefly. He really didn't give too many details, but I'm gonna play the clip anyway. Currency, Dame Dash yeah. are gonna clash in the courtroom, well, from mean, what I understand. I don't know what, what we're gonna do. Um, but when, when it's all said and done, i tell y'all about it. Yeah. Might be a little more money for them cars or something like that. Uh, I keep telling you about the boat. You know, I, I'm going to ask you one more question about this Dame situation, man. Because I just remember a year and a half ago... Um, Man, just being surrounded by all stars, it was a great feeling. I was there at the dojo, Cootie and Chike, uh, Rugs B, Styly, Most Def, J Alec, Cool Kids, um, Smoke Desert that we mentioned him, Erica Badu, Rizzo sometimes, Ski, uh, just a, a beautiful collection of talent, man. And, um, uh, you was the you was the first one, really. I remember getting the, doing the Rockefeller chain with you, man. Um, you know how disappointed are you that it kind of didn't uh, work not out? Ever, not ever disappointed. Like any situation I ever been through, you know what I'm saying. I uh, I just look at it as like like a lesson, you know what I'm saying. Just learning something. Any chance you get to learn something, that's not something you should be disappointed for. That's an opportunity for you to get some game, you know. So. It's all good. I'm glad. I'm glad, you know. Now, as we all know by now, Currency the Hot Spitter eventually signed with Warner Bros. in the year 2010, but I think that was just a distribution deal. Y'all got to understand, man, Currency the Hot Spitter has been in the presence of some of hip-hop's biggest moguls. From Birdman and Cash Money, to No Limit and Sea Murder, to Dame Dash, and even rocking the Rockefeller chain as his own at once. Currency is an artist that has proved that he has longevity in this game. And not only that, I know I didn't really go into deep details about how inspirational he's been on the fashion tip and streetwear side of hip hop because for years, man, people have been dressing like 2008, 2009, 2010 currency. As a matter of fact, Lil Yachty, Drake, these people are dressing like Currency was dressing in 2008, 2009, 2010. But what I can say about Currency is he always stayed true to who he is, man. He never bended, he never folded, he never sold his soul. And by doing so, he's always remained with the cult following. Now, Currency had Jet Life Records, and he's still running Jet Life Records to this day. Trademark the Skydiver and Young Roddy went and did their own thing. But you know, Corner Boy P and Street Wiz and even BG's son is signed to Currency the Hospital right now. These days, you can catch Currency in New Orleans laid back, chilling mostly, driving one of his many, many lowriders. So you might even see him sliding down Canal Street in the Rolls Royce culling it. What I can say about Spitter is he stayed true to his roots, man. So yeah, YouTube family, that was the story of Currency the Hot Spitter, man. 
like I told y'all, man, this is one of my favorite artists. So honestly, I feel honored to do this story. But uh, y'all jump in the comment section and let me know who y'all want to hear next, man. This is with Crispy Clean Cliff, a uh, Cliff World TV. Yeah, I'm gone, y'all. What's the deal, you two fans? We're Crispy Clean Cliff of Cliff World TV, and welcome to the channel. I know I haven't had the honor of introducing myself to a lot of y'all because I got a whole lot of new subscribers since I started doing this, y'all. Like, literally, I done went up about 16,000 subscribers in nine months. Now, initially, this channel, I started doing it during COVID, during the lockdowns, and everybody was bored. I had nothing else to do. So, Initially, I started telling my own stories because while I was locked down, <laughs> I watched a whole bunch of DJ Ghost videos. And I was like, you know what, I can do this. I can do this, I can do this shit, man. I can really do it. So that's what I did. I started telling my own stories and y'all might wanna go check those out because that's actually what got me popular. I did a series called Lil Rock Hood Story Times. And I basically just ran through, you know, all the type of hood events that happened to me during my adolescence, you know, funny stories. So from there, I grew a following. I wasn't yet nowhere near being a YouTuber. Uh, I probably got like 500 subscribers. And I always had a famous saying, we're gonna stay down until we come up together. I'm a firm believer in manifestation. I manifested everything that's going on right now. So from there, the channel just started going up. The people started tapping in with me, the channel just started going up. But somewhere along the way, I decided that I wanted to shed light on some of my favorite artists, the artist music that I grew up with. And for instance, Soldier Slim was one of my favorite artists growing up. And I noticed that he didn't have a lot of coverage on YouTube. And I took it upon myself, you know, I'm like, I'm gonna just do it. I'm gonna just do it. Now, mind y'all, YouTube family, I'm not, I wasn't making any money at the time at all. As a matter of fact, I'm working at temp agency jobs. I barely got any money at all. So some of my first videos still have the watermark on the videos. I, I have to bring this up because I see these comments all the time. Bro, take the watermark off the videos, man. You, you make enough money. Correction, when them videos was coming out with the watermarks on them, bro, I was not making no money, man. I wasn't. I'm just keeping it a whole P with y'all, bro. The only thing I got even still to this day is my cell phone, bro. My cell phone. But that video got good reactions and I decided to keep taking it up a notch from there. And then somewhere along the line, I realized that it's not a lot of us, black men, that's actually behind these documentaries, uh, documentaries narrating these stories. Uh, and that's not a diss to uh, the other men of other races doing their thing because I salute Trapler Ross, I salute 1090 Jake, I salute these men, but I started to notice like, this might be my calling because there's not a lot of us. I started to see comments saying, hey man, I like the fact that you a black man speaking on black history and it started to make me feel like you know what now i got a responsibility so i'm gonna start doing these documentaries and i'm gonna do my due diligence and i'm gonna try not to put too much messy stuff in it not not too police on it but i want to do a real respectful documentary on these people and that's just kind of what i did now i never knew i was gonna the channel was gonna grow like this at all so i appreciate y'all man i really 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 do appreciate y'all because without y'all bro this is this is all still a dream now, I'm a firm believer in manifestation. If it's one thing that I want to give off to my, my, my subscribers and people out there that's watching me, man, manifest y'all reality, bro. I'm, I'm from the train. I'm the man of the day. I'm pipping like a dumb one. I'm going to stop at the store, sell me an onion. Go and get some backwoods in the back of fun, young. Let a nigga play me sweet and he gon' meet the honey bun. I ain't ride with it unless he got a hundred round drum. Hit that nigga with the drink, he gon' butt up out I'm bomb. Hit it with the daddy store, I got the little baby sprung. Got to keep that thing on you coming from where I'm from. Got to keep that thing on you when you coming from the bird. I been jiggin' and finessing, got that boy and got that girl. She been moving up the ladder, cut the pimpin' in the world. Hey, be shootin' around her daily, why the fuck you at the skirt? Hey, y'all got a scope, it'll knock down the bear. Got a new BBL, make a nigga stop and stare. Sending packs in the mail, use the next day air. I send it to bitch too, I put it in the air. Feeling like rich, homie, I'm the man of the year. Walked in with two cups, I'm the man of the year. I ain't playing with these niggas, give me stress until I be. I be pippin' on my hoes, I'm the man of the year. I'm feeling like equal dollar, I'm the man of the year. We gon' get the finish good, I'm the man of the year. I'm the man of the year, I'm the man of the year, I'm the man of the A. I just want to let y'all know, bro, I appreciate y'all very much. 
I just had to come on here and introduce myself. Hey, y'all keep on rocking with your boy. Like I always say, man, we're going to stay down until we come up together, man. Another thing, another thing. Let me touch on one more thing. One more, one more, one more, one more, fam. One more. A lot of y'all be telling me, man, that ain't right, bro. That's the wrong street, uh, uh, wrong address, uh, uh, wrong birthday, bro. I'm just stepping into this journalism bag, man. Come on, man. Give me some time, bro. Let me give me some time, bro. Spare your boy. Good Lord, how much I'm from the hood. Do y'all see how adequate I be talking? <laughs> bro, come on. I'm doing a good job in my eyes. Now, let your boy grow. Help grow with your boy. Okay? Grow with your boy, man. Hey, dang. I can't get everything right, nigga. I'm not the feds. I'm not Jesus. Nigga, I'm not the FBI. I don't got 1090 Jake uh, goddamn computer stuff that he got to get all the right information. I don't got it, bro. Not just yet. Not just yet. Y'all stay down with boy, man. It's boy Creepy Clean Cliff, man. Cliff World TV. I'm glad y'all decided to subscribe to my channel. We family over here. I don't look at y'all like, oh, y'all are subscribers. Y'all are family. Nigga, we family. Nigga, I'm from the trenches. I'm from the gutter. If I can do what you can do with facts, I'm gone. YouTube family. I'm going to need y'all to tap in with my girl here by Honey Man. She is CEO, loctician, beautician, all-around miracle worker out of Spokane, Washington. But if that bag is right, she will fly to you. Now, I'm telling y'all, I done seen her turn some solid tools into dimes. Some solid tools into dimes. Some weight at the back of the line, so you ain't got to wait in line. I said, man, if you need your retwist, if you need your edges laid, if you don't want to go outside looking play, man, because I'm telling y'all, some of y'all, I seen y'all out there last weekend, and you was looking a little crushed. And she do kids here, too. And I seen some of y'all kids' pictures, man. And, hey, man, on picture day, that hair was nappy. So if y'all didn't have nobody to do it, I'm telling y'all, putting y'all down right now. Hair by honey, your booking done right now. You can't let your appearance be the interference. Don't let your appearance be the interference, I'm telling you. Don't try to lay your edges yourself. It ain't going to work. Hair by Honey. She is a professional. She does this for a living. Get your book it right now. It might be a line, but for the right dime, you might be able to jump the line. YouTube family. I'm going to need y'all to check out my boy, Ari Young, man. Coming out of California. He a streamer. He's a YouTuber. And he's an artist. Let's just say he's multi-talented. I mean, hey, the boy could be the next Constantinette. Twitch, holla at my boy. Send him a bag. To everybody that be on Twitch, even Discord. Man, y'all need to holla at my boy, Ari Young, man. This the wave of the future. Live streamers are creating a new millionaires. And I got faith in my boy, Ari Young. I mean, he was smart enough to get the promo. Y'all make sure y'all tap into his show, Stay Cloudy. Subscribe to him on Twitch. Area, man, look, he gaming, he doing music, he live streaming, blunt rolling contest, Mario Kart, you name it. Like I told y'all, this the wave of the future, man. Now let's jump into the video y'all been waiting for. YouTube family, I'ma need y'all to tap in with my boy Mimosa, man, and mobbing with Mimosa and his podcast. Look. If you're in the greater Northwest area and you trying to get exposure, man, and you know you deserve that spotlight and your music really hidden, Mobbing with Mimosa is the place to go. I'm telling y'all, man, he running the multimedia blog site and he'll pull up for the interview. He's been seen on camera with Big Sad 1900 collaborator Lil Booth out in Tacoma and that interview went yay yay. He did an interview with XD Stacks, FTFKT, and man, he even got me and BBDL on the interview, man. Listen, if you're in the greater Northwest area and you want some exposure, I'm telling you, Vancouver, Tequila, Tacoma, Seattle, Kennewick, Royal Orange, Renton, Belltown, tap in with Mobby with Mimosa, man. He on the rise. I'm letting y'all know, man. He one of my guys. I'm putting a stamp on it. Look out for Mobby with Mimosa podcast and make sure y'all subscribe to the channel. Listen, make sure y'all subscribe to the channel. Don't inbox me any more links. If you're in the greater Northwest area and you rap and you make music, I don't want to see no more links. Don't inbox me any more links. I need to see you on Mobbing with Mimosa's podcast. Then I'll pay attention. Hey, I'm 
I'm pippin' like I'm done one I'ma stop at the store, sell me a onion Go and get some backwoods in the back of Funyuns Let a nigga play me sweetie, he gon' meet the honey bun I ain't ride with it unless he got a hundred round drum Hit that nigga with the drink, he gon' butt up out I'm bomb Hit her with the daddy stroke, I got the little baby sprung Gotta keep that thing on you coming from where I'm from Gotta keep that thing on you when you coming from the bird I be juggin' and finessing, got that boy and got that girl She be moving up the ladder, cause the pimpin' in the world They be shootin' around here daily, why the fuck you actin' scared?